Good afternoon. Thank you for having me to speak on uh, uh, <coughs> a new generation of vitamin E called tocotrienol. But the area of vitamin E is probably well known to us, and uh, uh, especially tocopherol. But the uh, overlooked part, which is the second half of vitamin E, and that's what I'm hoping to cover in this, um, in this talk. I was in South America um, about seven years ago looking for lutein. Um, this is before lutein got really big for the macular degeneration. And I can't stop looking on the side of me of a plant which I later found out to be annatto. And this annatto plant, uh, you know, like unlike other fruit, they have no flesh. It just have seeds, you know. And then, and then the color of the annatto is what we use with Wisconsin cheeses and coloring. It's like that, like a carotenoid. And carotenoid is very unstable. And since they have no flesh and it's phototrophic, I surmise that something must be really protecting the plant. But I wasn't expecting it to be a vitamin E that is completely free of tocopherol. It needs the maximum amount of antioxidant protection it could get to protect the, so you can see Francesco de Aralana that first discovered the plant 600 years ago. And then the annatto seeds on the left-hand side and the fruit is on the bottom left. You can see them in botanical garden in Florida and Southern California sometimes. And <clears throat> this, all this to say in the last 100 years we had pathogenic challenge. In the last 50 years it's more of a chronic type challenge. And even that is slowly changing if you look at how I dubbed the word adult onset conditions to now juvenile onset. Not really rela relating to diabetes but just things that happen to adult are beginning to happen to children too. And you can see in the very young and the young, this is happening. So, and, and so anything that can help to intervene this early on in life would be good. Now to vitamin E, um, Professor Marit Traver had been working on vitamin E for a very long time. And she wrote a review paper, uh, almost like a, like a throw away the towel kind of thing, when he said vitamin E, antioxidant and nothing more on, on the one hand. And then Vanderbilt University said that, that vitamin E is not the spiffy vitamin that people think that it might be, and about two grams might work. See, this is a big chasmic change. And then on a USDA finding, 95% of Americans cannot even get the 12 milligram of vitamin E that is required. Mostly all this refer to alpha tocopherol. And now a recent book that just came out first ever on toco trinol, vitamin E beyond tocopherol. There's something to look forward to. Hopefully this is what I'm going to cover. And this part of vitamin E is known, alpha, beta, delta, gamma. For a long, long time it was alpha tocopherol as a birth vitamin from UC Berkeley. And then probably in the last 10 years or so, gamma tocopherol because it went after nitric oxide. And this is the other half of, toco tri uh, of vitamin E, toco trienol. Particularly I'm going to focus on delta and gamma tocotrienol because this is where it's indicated. If you look at it, it's desmethyl tocotrienol. So this uh, acronym DMTE, desmethyl tocotrienol, will show up, um, and particularly for heart diseases and cancer. All vitamin E, because they're chrominol, like CoQ10, like vitamin K, the antioxidant. And the difference between is that only tocotrienol can reduce cholesterol, inhibit cancer and diabetes. So these things have begun to show, particularly in the last 15, 20 years. And the only difference structurally between these two molecules is that tocopherol, they both have the antioxidant head. Tocopherol has a shorter tail because of three double bond, and hence they're called pharnaceal tail. By the way, the pharnaceal tail is the three isoprene unit. It'll, it'll be comparable to the repeating unit tail of CoQ10. The 10 is a 10 isoprene unit. They're part of the same family. Vitamin K, which is also a chrominol, have anywhere from two to four isoprene unit. Basically, if you lengthen it all along, it will become dollar call. If you lengthen it further, it will become rubber, like rubber from rubber tree. I want to make another point about uh, the tocopherol aspect. I purposely put down the references so you should look up at this for yourself. The, the, the slide that is put into your D, uh, DVD was an earlier version. I put on new references like that. This may seem controversial to people, but it, or the precedence has already been set that if alpha tocopherol is high, it would block compromises, induces, and increases the functions of tocotrienol. Some may ask why this might be so. If you take a lot of beta carotene and lutein, 
the lutein will be compromised in absorption because of beta carotene. So it's not so unknown as you might seem. So I will touch on this as I go on to the other slide, but I won't come back to this one. So if you want, you can look up the references on this. Uh, particularly interesting is the third one, that tocopherol induces the cannibalization of the tocotrienol right in the liver. So therefore, when you take tocotrienol, it had to be taken separate from the tocopherol. There are three natural sources of tocotrienol, from rice, from palm, and from anato. And the anato is the only one that is tocopherol. I've never seen a natural abundance where, where you can find a vitamin E that is just tocotrienol. And my gut feeling is that they didn't do it for human beings. They did this because if you remember, I show you from the fruit, it's, it's, it's an Amazon rainforest fruit. It's phototrophic, follow the sun, the pot's open, and it has no flesh, no mesocarp, no flesh. And then on the seed coat is the carotenoid. And carotenoid are conjugated double bond, unstable like mad. Even fish oil is not as unstable as carotenoid. Think of lutein, lycopene, beta carotene, alpha carotene, acid. they are unstable. That's why they're singlet oxygen, where the oxygen is deficient, right inside the organelles, is that? Never mind, I'm going to talk back to this. So because of this, the plant have to make a protectant to protect the color before they get pollinated and, and before they get dispersed the seeds away. And, and hence, this is it.